This is diagrammed here as a balance of forces in which kinesin 5 is pushing outwards as it walks towards the plus ends of the microtubules, and the kinesin 14 is pulling inwards as it walks towards the minus ends of the microtubules. And evidence for this kind of balance comes from genetic experiments where if you delete the kinesin 5, then the spindle will tend to collapse. So we have a, a combination here of the mechanics that is offered by the stability of the microtubules themselves and motors in the middle that are pushing and pulling so we can regulate quite carefully what's going to happen to this zone of overlap. I've often thought about this a little bit the way you might think about how do you do fine motor control. You want to be able to push in both directions so you hold something between thumb and fingers and now you can manipulate it quite precisely like the violin bow or something. And here, the spindle is manipulating the interzone microtubules by being able both to push and pull on them at the same time. But this is not all that's going on in this spindle. There is also the dynamics of the microtubules themselves. Microtubules, of course, can polymerize and depolymerize. And this cycle has been well described by many people in many labs, and I'm not going to dwell on it here. But polymerization involves the assembly of tubulin that has GTP bound to it. The GTP is hydrolyzed, and then when disassembly occurs, these microtubule strands, so-called protofilaments, seem to bend during the course of the disassembly process. This kind of dynamics is going on in the spindle all the time. And there's good evidence for this. Evidence has come from photobleaching, where you can see the spindle microtubules turn over quickly. But the most remarkable evidence for it has come from using a fluorescent tubulin in order to mark individual microtubules in the cell and take advantage of very sensitive cameras to be able to see this fluorescence, even when there's so little there that a microtubule is not uniformly labeled, but it's heterogeneously labeled, or it looks like speckles. And this is called speckle imaging. And it's been used by a number of investigators, having been invented by Ted Salmon and Claire Waterman, as a way of looking at microtubule dynamics in living cells. And here I'm showing you some spindles that were imaged with this method, showing that the microtubules of the spindle are continuously moving towards the poles in both directions, as if kinesin 5 is pushing them outward from that zone of overlap in the middle. But if that were true, the spindle should be elongating, and it's not, suggesting that there's control on the microtubule dynamics. And this dynamics comes from yet another microtubule motor, a kinesin 13. It has the behavior that it can help promote disassembly of microtubules. One kinesin 13, anyway, is concentrated at the spindle poles. And that means that it can help to chew up the microtubules as they're pushed towards the pole, allowing the spindle to treadmill away from the center without getting longer. And indeed, in this work from Sharp, you can see that as the microtubules are being followed with speckle imaging when the kinesin 13 has been inactivated by antibody injection, the motion towards the poles reflected here by this movement outwards because this is a time axis and this is a space axis and the slope of these lines reflect how fast these speckles are moving. The speckles are moving much more slowly when we impede the activity of this disassembly motor at the poles. So we not only have motors functioning as mechanical entities pushing, we have motors functioning in the dynamics of spindle microtubules.